You know, I've been putting off making a video like this for probably years at this point, not because it wouldn't make for a fun or engaging topic, it's actually the opposite. People love this type of content. It's more because of the Genshin community's intolerance towards stuff like this, and I get it. This is a casual single player PvE game, balanced around every character being usable. But while it's true that objectively everyone can be played, we're at a point where things are being evaluated based on relativity. In that one character is bad, not in the sense of them being unable to complete the game's content, but more that there are so many alternatives that do their job more efficiently that it beggars belief that anyone would use them over said alternatives. The other thing that discouraged me from making this was that I know for a certainty the entire comments would be playing whataboutism and be like actually this character is worse, but at this point who cares. For today's video we'll be going over the 5 worst characters in Genshin Impact. Buckle in because I'm going to be pissing off a lot of people. Oh by the way, for those of you wondering why I'm not including Aloy, it's because she's unobtainable for all accounts created on 2022 onwards, but yes, she would be in this list if I included her. And as always, this video is not ordered. Let's begin. First character will be, and believe me and hurts to say this because she deserves so much more, Ningua. Now, I'm aware that Mihoya doesn't necessarily give units with higher lore significance or power preferential treatment in numbers and design. For crying out loud, one of the best Electro units, if not the best, is a normal high school girl with the Chunibyo complex. But I still think it's offensive that Ningguang is not a 5 star character when she's the de facto political leader of Liyue, but that's another topic for another time. In her defense, Ningguang is a fairly worthwhile unit to have as her on-field attacker for young accounts who are just getting started. She has good range, consistent DPS, and can take advantage of many different support units that you're expected to find early on. The benefits don't really stretch beyond that. The single dominant issue in Ningguang's situation is that she's in the worst role of the worst element. The worst role in Genshin is main DPS for the simple reason that you can only have one of them per team. Some DPS units, aka all fielders and supports have up to 3 party slots if not the entire party to work with, meaning those units are not actively competing against one another for party space, or rather they're not competing as heavily. For main DPS, it's a different matter. Ningguang has to compete against not just the 3 on fielders in her own area of expertise, but theoretically every on fielder in the game because unlike Star Rail, outside of enemies that are immune to certain elements, it doesn't necessarily matter who you bring. You can fight the Hydro Hypostasis with Pyro, Electro, Cryo, Geo, Anima, whatever you want, so long as it's not Hydro. So for example, Ningguang would have to fight for a spot in your party against the likes of Genyu, Lini, Shogun, Nivellet, Shao, Kutsing, Sino, Yula, etc. And she's practically guaranteed to be eclipsed by all of them. Even within her own field, Navia and Ito will output far more damage than she ever can or will, and just recently with Farina, Noelle has made huge gains in damage too. Being a main DPS on fielder is what hurts the situation more than anything else. If Ningguang was a support or off fielder, she would be doing so much better, and the annoying thing is that she has supportive elements in her kit. Her J screen can block projectiles, which no doubt comes in handy against bosses with them, and she gives bonus geo damage to allies that pass through her J screen. Furthermore, at C4, it also gives a token bit of elemental rest. If Hoyo conceptualized her to be a support or geo off fielder from the get go, she might have been able to get away with being a 4 star, such as if she had geo follow up damage the way Xing Chou does Hydro. Personally, I would rather she be a 5 star geo attacker because so far all 3 geo main DPSs are Claymore users and Ningguang would make for a nice change of pace. But sadly, we're not getting that. Again, the words burn my tongue as I say them, but Ningguang is one of the worst characters in the game. She's a Geo Force Star Catalyst main DPS from version 1, possibly the unluckiest combination of attributes to have been given. Next character will be Xinyan. Really sorry, Xinyan means I just can't cope any longer. I respect the determination to find ways for her to work, but we are way past the point of her being a possible maybe. Like I said in her Why No One Plays episode, the fact that people are trying to use her as a support when she was designed as a main damage dealer should be a telltale sign that something is wrong with her. Actually, a lot of things are wrong with her. Xinyan's a character torn between equal parts pyro and physical damage and equal parts attack and defense. While hybrid scaling on its own isn't a bad thing, she was balanced around needing bulk to achieve a net zero, even though investing in one prevents you from investing in the other. Other hybrid scalers like I'll hate them not only can spec into bolt simultaneously, but they compound on one another to amplify damage even more. Attack and defense on the other hand don't synergize that harmoniously with one another, and unlike Noel and Ito who directly convert defense into attack, Xinyan's attacks and shielding scale up defense and attack separately, making it impossible to achieve optimal results on both at the same time. Xinyan was one of Genshin's early attempts at creating a bruiser class, someone who can deal a lot of damage and take a lot of damage. Suffice to say, it was an abject failure. Her actual DPS comes from physical attacks. As you know already, the physical element, quote unquote, has not seen any meaningful attention in years. Even the newest physical support, Mika, has mostly been turned into a general healer, not a physical buffer. Like Ningguang, being a 4 star main DPS is already a bad start, but being a physical damage dealer may be even worse than Geo, as you cannot benefit from elemental damage bonuses of any kind. There was one niche where she did find fringe use in, Monopyro with C6 Bennett for those who wanted to try that out but either didn't have Klee or didn't like how she played. 
But with Linny now in the picture, Xinyan is officially gone. She's overshadowed in physical and pyro-based teams, and her numbers are so poor that even when she came out, she was considered one of the worst characters. So you can imagine how bad things are for her three years later. Realistically, there's no universe where she'll be good, whether support or on fielder. As an on fielder, you can copy paste the things I said about Ningguang for Xinyan, only replace Jiu with physical. As a support, she's screwed either way. Supporting physical is a dead end job, and supporting pyro demands that you scale the Great Wall of Shanling and Bennett, which will never be possible for any 4 star pyro character, especially not someone split between physical and pyro. To anyone using her to this day, I have nothing but respect and condolences for you. Next character will be a 5 star, and not counting Aloy, she's definitively the worst 5 star in Genshin Impact. Chi Chi. I promise this will be the last time I mention Chi Chi having made two videos involving her already. You guys know the drill by now, so let's say it together. Elemental skill gives no energy. More than that though, Chi Chi is a 4 star character with a 5 star label. To her credit, even though we have so many new healers now if we go by raw numbers, technically her healing is still the highest in the game. Unfortunately, that's all she does. Her entire base kit is centered around healing. With constellations, you can start delving into other fields, and she can finally regenerate energy with this skill. But acquiring constellations of the worst 5 star in the game is seen as a bad thing, not a good one. Only providing healing and nothing else is what makes Chi Chi so bad. Every other healer in the game has something else to offer. Kokomi has Hydro Application, Baiju can shield and react with Dendro, Bennett offers attack power, so on and so forth. Which is the funny thing too. Even from day 1, Chi Chi was power crept by Bennett. Not only does he boost attack power, but he's much, much easier to use than her. For you to tap into the full extent of Chi Chi's restorative capability, you have to specifically be attacking the enemy marked by a talisman. And while she can apply it to everyone around her with their burst being target based if they die, you lose the ability to heal apart from the skill regeneration. Against bosses, that's alright given you're usually fighting just one enemy the whole time, but against multiples, Chi Chi's healing can fluctuate from overkill to non-existent, making her deceptively inconsistent. In my video on proposing theoretical changes for her, I talked about how for her to be better, she would have to do more than just healing, and I still stand by the notion that the best way for her to stand out would be for her to be a debuffing unit, reducing enemy defense, resistances, attack and whatnot because that's an area Genshin hasn't really tapped into yet. Star Rail has Silver Wolf who specializes in debuffing and lowering stats, but in Genshin we don't really have a dedicated debuffer outside of Mona, and even hers is more of a damage amp, not a debuff. Lisa and Razor have ways to reduce defense, but that's about it. So this could be a direction they can take Chi Chi. Unlike other healers who increase stats or apply elements, Chi Chi can be a debuffing unit. Maybe then people won't cringe when they pull her off banner. But that just might be wishful thinking too. The addition of Farina has elevated the situation of almost every healer. Chi Chi is one of the few who really didn't, which goes to show you how hopeless things are for her at this point. Next character will be Hydro Traveler. If I were to make this list ordered, Hydro Traveler would be smack dab at number 1. Imagine being the worst character despite being part of the strongest element in the game. This character, if we can even call it one, is a complete and utter dumpster fire within a dumpster fire. It's comical really. After seeing the Traveler gradually become more and more viable with Electro and then Dentro, everyone had hopes that Hydro would take another step forward. And then they made this. The premise of Traveler is to serve as, I guess, a trial version of what the element is all about. If you take a look at each element we have so far, then compare the Traveler to the Archon, that's the association I developed with them. Animo, Geo, Electro, Dendro, and Hydro Traveler serve to introduce you to the focal point of whichever elements they are, while Venti, Zhongli, Shogun, Nahida, and Farina fully epitomize it. Now considering Farina is in like the top 3 or at minimum top 5 best units in the game, for Hydro Traveler to be not just the worst of the 5 travelers but the worst unit period is just so, so wrong. Playstyle wise, I can somewhat see what they were trying to do, but they executed on it horribly. Let's talk about the problems. 1. Elemental skill is terrible. It drains 4% of your max health per second and adds it to your bullet damage, only if you take a look at the numbers, it's almost negligible. First of all, Hydro Traveler's elemental skill scales off attack, and yet their damage bonus is based on max health. So they have the Xinyan problem, where if you try to spec into one, you lose the other. Furthermore, look at how weak the scaling is on these attacks, especially considering how long you're expected to stand there and attack, as well as the cooldown associated with that. You can think of Hydro Traveler's skill as Nivelle's charge attack, but with a microscopic fraction of the power essentially, as they both have the same basic principle. The thing is, there are so many other ways to continuously apply Hydro that for a main DPS Hydro unit to be good, they have to actually deal damage, and Hydro Traveler does none. If you were to make use of the press for just the burst of damage, the only situation in which a single instance of Hydro damage would be useful is forward vaporize, and at that point, you might as well just use any other Hydro unit. For their burst, it's basically Animal Traveler's Tornado, but worse. It cannot be stopped by anything, it continuously travels forward. You know how Ayaka's burst stops when it collides with an enemy? This one doesn't, it just keeps moving. People have talked about how it can actually fly off the map. If they were trying to achieve damage, they failed horribly, and if they are trying to achieve application, they failed horribly too. The bubble has a duration of only 4 seconds or 7 with C2, and a 20 second cooldown. That's a 5 to 3 times downtime. 
They have the same self-regen mechanic that Novalet has with the source water droplets, and with C6 you can heal other members of your team, but unlike Novalet, you have to manually pick them up and the healing is awful. If recovery is your concern, you would actually do better using TG. My word, this character is trash. Like, this is the only character where I can call them dog sh**, and I don't think anyone would be mad at me for it. From both the DPS and support perspective, Hydro Traveler is completely unusable. And it's not even because there are units who do their job better. They just suck. They could be the only Hydro character in the game, and people would still call them bad. Last character will be Amber. Ah yes, Amber. The first Why No One Plays episode I've ever made on Vars 2. And to be honest, I kind of want to remake it. Rin, if you're watching this, I salute your unwavering copium, I mean dedication to your craft. In all seriousness though, Amber is someone who for most people has only one job, get you through the tutorial. Being the first character you add to your party, she teaches you a lot of the basic fundamentals of the game's combat. From swapping out, to elements, to reactions, to the usage of range attacks and aim shots, stuff like that. Being a tutorial character, no one expects her to be good, but when compared to every other unit in the game, it's pretty sad how underwhelming she is. Beyond the scope of her obvious flaws, such as being focused on rapid pyro attacks despite pyro wanting to output strong single hits, not death by a thousand cuts, Baron Buddy not having the auto explosion thing without constellations, and getting extra copies of Amber being ironically more difficult than getting C6 on a 5 star depending on your luck, Amber has gotten more and more irrelevant over time. Beginning in version 2, we had Yoimiya, a 5 star pyro bow user who is superior to Amber in every way you can imagine, with the one exception being off field application. Only there's not a single team that capitalizes on Amber's type of application. Then we got Linny in version 4, another pyro bow user, burying any hopes of Amber finding a way out through on fielding. As for off fielding, just like Xinyan, Amber would have to scale the Great Wall of Bennett and Shangling, and she'll have to get in line. Other than Xinyan, Amber is outclassed by every single Pyro character in the game, and as more and more Pyro units come out, she will get pushed further and further down. Pyro in particular is known for its one-dimensionality, being exclusively centered around sheer force. It's difficult for the element's members to distinguish themselves from one another, exacerbating Amber's chances of being anything more than just a tutorial character. She's underpowered in an element focused on power, and the one niche in which you could make a case for her being elemental application is monopolized by Shenling, whose absence of internal cooldown on Pyronado makes her leaps and bounds more effective than Amber's entire kit. However, at the very least, for the Outrider, everyone has used her at least once. You can go an entire playthrough without ever touching Xinyan, so Amber does have that going for her, but regardless, unfortunately she will round up this list as one of the worst characters in the game. I want to reiterate that this is not personal. I have no bias against any of these units. My only personal grudge is against Eula mates. I'm just kidding, it's all in good fun. Since I know most of you are going to be going, but what about this character or that character? Let me know in the comments if you think there are other units who are worse than the 5 I chose, and why. For now though, if you enjoyed the video, it would be great if you could leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at Vosvarem, join my Discord server, and check out my updated Top 10 Best Characters video if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.